Hey, what's up? I'm Rakima. Welcome to Detail Dream, where the primary focus is to expose you to the expansive world of luxury goods for yourself and your home. Today, let's discuss two very special candles from the collection that would make incredible Mother's Day gifts. I narrowed it down to two heavy hitting candles that has top tier elegance with luxury in terms of brand and scents. Anything for the moms, daughters, sisters, and wives in our lives, right? Especially if they're into fragrance or have a candle collection of their own. Or if you're a person that loves opulent scents yourself, this is for you too. I've personally been enjoying these two candles over the past couple of weeks or so and thought to myself, these would make incredible gifts for scent lovers and collectors. The most incredible thing I love about scent is the memories they can create. And the best part about that is you don't know when a particular memory is created until a certain smell takes you back to that particular time. Scent is such an important aspect to life. Not to get overly poetic, but sharing scents with the closest people that encompass our reality creates this layer of past memories, present moments, and a future that will hold these warm thoughts. All through scent. Pretty incredible when you think about it. I like to play around with the idea that scent is a version of time. And that very idea I place on the importance of scent is one of the reasons I'm naturally drawn to the Atelier of Fornicetti and their scents. This first candle we'll be discussing comes from one of the three new collections from Fornesetti Perfumi. This is the Sapoy scented candle from the Fafala Balasera collection. My apologies if my pronunciations are off on these names. My Italian is not good. You would think I'd be fluent in Italian since my favorite car manufacturer is Lamborghini, but I always try my best with pronouncing names as they are intended without any disrespect to the language. But I'm going to give the best Italian I have though, so let's break down these new collections. Fornicetti describes a scented candle as something that stops time from being time. It becomes a sideway glance, a whispered tale, a flickering thought, moments suspended in the fragrance and its flame. These candles are creations that should be treasured and passed on to live multiple lives and rediscovered over time as objects of inspiration. The names of these new candles are translated to open-ended stories bound to a fragrance and its light. Every one of these new candles are meant to mark a time to be savored and remembered through its flame and fragrance. This is just one of the many reasons why I admire the Fornicetti Atelier, such incredible, beautiful meanings to why they create and these new collections are a step forward. I think I mentioned in the first Fornicetti review that the collections aren't as streamlined as other brands that will have one cent per candle. Let's navigate through the new collections. Okay, follow me. Fornicetti has three new collections and with each of these collections, they have their own scent. The Fafala Belasera collection with the Girardano Segreto scent, the Peccato Original collection with the Fruto Prohibito scent, in the Architectura collection with the Imaginacion scent, and each collection has five different pieces. For example, the Fafala Balastera collection has Sepoy, which is the standard size candle, the Volta, which is the room spray, and the remaining three pieces are all named Nel Mantre, which is the large scented candle, the tall scented candle, and the vase scented candle. And these five pieces of the Fafala Balastera collection all have the Girardano Segreto scent. I also want to mention the Nel Monterey candles are offered as a set and as separate pieces. They look quite good as a set, I have to admit, and could be displayed as one big decor piece with these different tiers they have. I'm not going to go into details about the other two collections since I don't have any of those pieces, but I will say the Architectura collection carries the same naming format as the Fafala Belasera collection, and the Picato Original collection differ slightly with a couple different pieces, but we're solely going to focus on the Sepoy candle from the Fafala Belastera collection. This one was actually sent to me from the team over at Twisted Lily, who are big supporters of the channel. Twisted Lily is where I buy a lot of my fragrances as well. I also have a coupon code with them, Detail 10 for 10% off. I'll have this information and links in the description as well. Huge thanks to the Twisted Lily team for supporting the Detail Dream channel and for sending over a candle from one of my favorite brands. It's not too often I get to add a Fornicetti candle to the collection, but when I do, it's a very special occasion. Fornicetti is an atelier known for their whimsical designs where a world is suspended between the imaginary and the real. These designs are something I'm naturally drawn to with the meaning behind them that carry over into the home fragrance. A blend of design and fragrance with iconic motifs combined with tailor-made scents for a sensorial experience. 
The unboxing experience of 480 candles are always great and the Sepoy candle <laughs> is no different. The box is large compared to the candle itself. Probably a little too large if I'm being honest. But at least the candle is secure, right? Pulling off the top, you're met with the gorgeous vessel of the candle nestled inside the base. And I noticed the vessel has more of an oval shape to it, which is something new and unique from Fornicetti. Well, at least for me it is. The Fofala Blastida collection is my current favorite collection from the Atelier for a couple great reasons. The Fofala or butterflies flying around the foliage and Blastida you see on the vessel expands on the idea of butterflies flying in and out of thoughts and becoming fantasies roaming free. This particular collection is based on three iconic Farnesetti themes. Fogli, which means leaves or foliage, Fofala, which are butterflies, and Balasada, which are stone balustrades. These themes are brought together to form a dreamlike scenery for stories to flutter around. The Giardino Segreto scent, which translates to secret garden, is described to be an idealized Italian secret garden with ingredients embodying the green shady scent of undergrowth mixed with the dry aroma of stone walls and overgrown balustrades. These ingredients together evokes a rich tapestry of mainly herbs and foliage. When I first put my nose to the scent, my immediate first thoughts was that this was a sweet, warm, fruity scent with a hint of some floral and woodiness, not so much green. There's definitely a lot going on within the Girardano Segreto scent with top sweet notes of rhubarb, tomato leaves, and wild black raspberry. Going into the warmth of the main notes of gabinum, petit gran, geranium, bourbon, and carnation, tied together with a warm resinous woody base of opopanex, myrrh, sandalwood, ebony, and agarwood. This is a densely packed scent. Smelling this on cold, if you're familiar with bays from Diptyque, then you'll be in the ballpark of how this smell. Bays, of course, has a potent fruity essence, and this, this is much more tamed in a sense that it has more touches of floral and woody nuances. There isn't any one particular note in the scent of Giordano Segreto that stands out to me. The combination of the top notes is what I mostly pick up on cold. The top notes are very prominent with the fruity rhubarb and black raspberry. Let me ask you something. Would you actually consider this a gourmand with the top notes it has? Let me know your thoughts. With my experience so far with this candle, when burning, the mid and base notes quickly find their way to the top of the scent, changing the overall character of the candle, providing amazing warmth with some light floral touches. I actually found it quite shocking at how much it changed when it was burning. The warm woody and floral notes mixed with the bright fruity notes made this one of the most elegant candles I've experienced. I wouldn't say this is a green scent as it's described to be. It's more of a fruity scent on cold and of course warming up when burning. I also don't see any notes that will give off that green foliage smell. Maybe the tomato leaves, but that's about it. Let me know your thoughts from knowing the scent notes. Let me know if I'm missing anything. This is a sweet woody scent to me personally. I wonder how this would have turned out if instead of warm woody notes, more green or beige notes would have been paired with the fruity notes. Probably would have been just as incredible. The cold throw of Giardino Segreto is moderate. I get occasional whiffs, but nothing too prominent or noticeable unless I'm really close to it. The hot throw, however, is strong. Not overwhelmingly strong, but performs great in a medium to large size space. This is the standard size candle, so I'm sure if more performance is needed, then I will opt for the Nermontide large or vase candle. Nonetheless, the warm, woody, fruity scent from the hot throw fills the space with pure elegance. This is a lot of candle from the interpretation of the meaning behind it. It's what I personally look for when adding candles to the collection. Creating a memory by freezing time for just a moment is what makes this an incredible gift for Mother's Day or for a collector that collects these type of pieces. So honored to have this in the collection. And thanks to the Twisted Lily team and all of you for making this happen. This next candle, I was a little skeptical about at first, but was pleasantly surprised at how good it is. It's the Baccarat Rouge 540 candle from Mason Francis Kirkjian. These two candles, Furnacetti and this MFK candle, are quite the heavy hitters. Candles that will stand out and make a statement inside of a space. I did purchase this MFK candle myself some time ago, but it's also offered on a Twisted Lily site, so I figured it would be a great follow-up to the Furnacetti candle. I know, I know, many of you may already be familiar with the fragrance, 
Either you have Baccarat Rouge yourself in your fragrance collection or you've come across almost every fragrance reviewer talking about their love for it, their hate for it, dupes of it. I get it. There's a plethora of coverage on this fragrance. It's plentiful. So my apologies if you're tired of hearing about it. But the candle is just as good, if not a little better than the fragrance. I see Baccarat Rouge as a universal scent with its rich elegance that both men and women can enjoy without really feeling any type of way about it. It really stands out when you walk into a room and the sillage will have people turning their neck every single time. It's my reason for saying this will make a phenomenal Mother's Day gift, aside from how popular it is. I myself love how Baccarat smells on my skin. It's very strong, but not overwhelming if you're not heavy handed. And I am heavy handed, I have to admit. And remember, fragrance can smell completely different from person to person. I don't particularly worry about smelling like anyone else. Fragrance reviews coming to the channel soon. The Baccarat Rouge candle carry the same feeling as the fragrance in terms of being enjoyed by both masculine and feminine scent lovers. I figured if I loved the way it smelled on my skin, then maybe, just maybe, it would smell just as good as a candle burning in my space. The candle comes in gold trimmed white packaging. The candle thankfully comes with a lid that's in the golden color that pairs well with the white vessel. The label of the vessel mimics the actual Baccarat Rouge 540 Eau de Parfum fragrance bottle. The x Eau de Parfum bottle has a nice golden label that I think will look a little nicer on the candle, but either one will do. It's still a nice touch. I noticed I don't venture off into these types of candles often. These types of candles meaning fragrance house candles. I have to explore more because Tom Ford Candles has opened my mind to wanting to experience more fragrance house candles. I believe those are the only other candles I have from a fragrance house. Oh yeah, I do have a couple from the Harmonist that I also love. When it comes to Baccarat Rouge, this extremely popular scent combines nature with master craftsmanship to provide an exceptionally made scent. The floral, amber, and woody scent type of the fragrance is made from the encounter of Mason Francis Kirkjian and Mason Baccarat. The key notes of this scent is a beautiful mixture of jasmine, saffron, cedarwood, and ambergris. It has that rich, smooth creaminess exactly as the actual fragrance. It's what I love most about it. When it comes to the performance of the candle, the cold throw is going to be a little subtle. I would have preferred a more stronger cold throw when I just have this sitting out. It's still a nice surprise when I do get the occasional whiff. The hot throw is exactly how I like it. It's strong like the fragrance, but just strong enough to enjoy and experience how smooth it is. Great for burning in a medium to large size room any time of day. This is definitely a head turner when walking into a space that has this burning. They'll probably ask you, is that that Baccarat Rouge fragrance you have on? And your response would be, Oh no, that's just Baccarat Rouge 540, the candle. And sip some tea for dramatics. This is a 10 ounce candle with a 55 hour burn time, the average for a candle this size. The wax is made from French plant and mineral wax. Although this burns very clean and even, mineral wax is a form of paraffin, so I will more than likely resort to using this with the warmer most of the time. To be honest, I would love to smell more jasmine with Baccarat Rouge. But that's just because I'm obsessed with that deep, musky smell. Overall, this scent has so many dupes for a reason. I personally prefer to go for the original creation of something, whenever I can. Sometimes it may be worth it to go for the dupes because Bergen's houses sometimes reformulate things to a lower quality and other factors, but with Baccarat, I haven't found that to be the case. I still enjoy this creation for the elegance it has. It's warm, it's creamy, a little sweet, but very smooth and unforgettable. It's not like I didn't expect this to smell exactly like the fragrance. It's just that sometimes fragrance houses tend to, I guess, cheap out on the candle variant and not put as much quality or thought into it. From what I experienced so far with this candle and other candles I smelled on cold from MFK, this house does an extremely great job with the quality of their candles to make sure you get the same scent experience as the fragrances. The Baccarat Rouge 540 candle will make a phenomenal gift for fragrance lovers and collectors. For Mother's Day, it can honestly be any scent that can create special moments and memories, especially if they're into fragrance and candles. It's a bonus. But these are just two candles from the collection that has incredible top tier elegance with their scent. Like I said, two heavy hitting candles that I thoroughly enjoy. Now I have to go thoroughly practice my Italian.